seriously, can it get any more insane than this? Regardless of what happens, the Moto 3 performance is going to get the biggest upgrade it has ever gotten ever since the introduction of track mode. Now let's go back in time a little bit here. Six years ago when the Moto 3 was first introduced and it was literally mind-blowing. The amount of power it had in such a small package is really unimaginable and a lot of people were just getting overly excited comparing it to other vehicles but moving forward six years now we are in a space that is extremely competitive and there is a lot of evs out there that are just as quick and just as fast as the model 3 performance i've said it time and time again that the model 3 is no longer the quickest and the fastest vehicle in its segment there are a lot of ultimate performance vehicle in its segment that are purely ev and can surpass the quickness and the speed of the Model 3 performance. The biggest stem of this issue isn't so much the weight or the overall driving dynamics of the vehicle, it's more so the drive motors and what they are able to push out. So in terms of 0 to 60, we all know that Tesla excels in that so much that there is literally no other vehicle on the road that can beat it at this point. But as soon as you hit the 60 or 70 mile per hour range, you're gonna notice that it starts to taper down in power and this is where a lot of other EVs starts to kick in with their second gear or their powertrain and get a boost overhead the Model 3. In terms of raw acceleration, the Model 3 has every other vehicle beat right there. There is no need for this segment of a sedan to go any quicker. However, in terms of performance oriented gains, we are not getting that much with another vehicle anyways. So honestly, the quickness we are good there is just really how fast the vehicle can go after a certain amount of speed. This is where the Model 3 really lacks and a lot of people have been complaining about it all these years and this is where people started dubbing the 0 to 60 is what EVs can only do. But of course all of that changed once the Plaid Model S's and X's came out and now what we're left with is just the Model Y and the Model 3 which have to deal with this issue. Well it all changes this year with the Tesla Model 3 plaid or whatever they're going to call it this is going to be the most insane vehicle you're going to see it's going to be a tri-motor monster and starting at 800 horsepower it's literally going to demolish everything in its path now that number seems a little extreme to be honest and i still have my doubts but this is literally mind-bending if tesla can put that much power into such a small package the only real time we've seen that much power inside of a vehicle is typically in large larger vehicles that are a lot heavier like the Model S, the Model X, the BMW Series 5, and the S classes. Now you guys might be asking and this is the answer. The real reason why those vehicles are the ones that get the insane horsepower is because of traction. You can technically put an infinite amount of power into a vehicle but if it doesn't have the tractions on the wheels there is nothing that you can do in terms of how fast it can go. It'll definitely do crazy burnouts which is pretty sick to be honest but other than that it is not going to accelerate quick or fast so this is really going to take a lot of engineering in tesla's part to be able to put 800 horsepower into the model 3 and still make it accelerate that the way it does now before you guys start to roast me there is evidence to this 800 horsepower somewhat so let's go with the flow first off earlier this year in a firmware update we've gotten some kind of reference to the upcoming model 3 performance vehicle they dubbed that at the v2 as you guys can see here in this line of code it does say model 3 performance version 2 so most likely that means that there is going to be a totally upgraded version and not simply just a redesign in terms of the exterior this was well documented in my last videos on the production of the drive units for these new highland model 3s if you guys haven't already watched that check it out drop it link in the description below and up top there now alongside this firmware update code we've also seen the performance model one v2 so it's safe to assume that whatever we're getting in the model 3 we are likely going to be seeing it in the model y as well now in terms of what's happening more recently after the announcement of the highland model 3s a european certification started coming out regarding the model 3 performance which hasn't officially been announced by tesla yet surprisingly enough on the documentation it does show a model 3 performance and a different drive motor that is supposed to be coming on these vehicles 
you'll first see that the rest of the lineup from the base model up to the long range model does use a standard hairpin winding. And then there is the Model 3 Performance, which does not have any indication of the drive unit at all. This definitely means that it doesn't share the same drive motors as the rest of the trims. And then on top of all of this, there is an indicator here that you guys really need to pay attention to. What you'll notice is that the Performance Model 3 here does have an indicator that shows it as a T and typically when there is a T in the eighth digit of the VIN it does mean that this is going to be a plaid model if you guys don't believe me go on to the certifications for the plaid model S's and X's and check out the eighth VIN there and you'll see that it does also have the exact same T in that placement is this a coincidence I don't know but it very well does indicate that the performance model is going to get something drastically different than the rest of the trims to add to all of this and hype you guys up even more, there has been more recent indications in the handbook directly from Tesla that the Model 3 Performance Highland is going to get updated thicker, wider tires at 275s. This is considered huge in the realms of performance sedans and typically saved only for those vehicles like the M3, M4, C63s and so on and so forth. It's also worth noting that the current Model 3 Performance with 500 horsepowers and above only has 235s in the back and if the 235s can handle 500 horsepower and Tesla had to update it to 275 that means that there is going to be a drastic difference in a performance so yeah it looks like Tesla is going to be putting out a lot more power in the rear of the Model 3 and this is why we're getting the much thicker tires now to wrap everything up here there is definitely a reason why the announcement of the Model 3 performance was held back in Europe and in Asia they are working Working on the drive units right now and as I've mentioned in previous videos they are also indicating newer external designs for this model trim that means for the very first time in the history of Tesla vehicles they are going to differentiate between the performance models versus the rest of the lineup so this means that you're going to be getting a totally different exterior and you're going to be able to, to easily differentiate between the rest of the trim versus the performance some might like this some might not it's really up to you and where you're at but i personally really like the idea of having something different it's got to be something similar to the amg and the m series compared to the rest of the lineup so we're going to start to see similar thing happening to tesla here so yeah if you guys were planning to hold off for the performance i'd say continue holding off and don't lose hope yet because something big is going to happen very soon and you guys are going to miss out if you decide to back out and start picking up on the long range. I will continue to update you guys as much as I can with the performance, with the Highland and with everything else that's going on in the Tesla world. Before I end this video, I do want to apologize for what had happened in the previous video with the uninformed information. I do want to be as transparent and as honest with you guys as possible. Every time I push a video i am just as hyped and just as trusting as you guys so i definitely will be back checking a lot of sources before i push out any other information so yeah i do really appreciate all of you guys for understanding for me and sometimes mishaps happen now if you guys are into teslas and evs and wanting the latest news if you guys haven't already subscribed to this channel hit that subscribe button that bell notification and make sure you guys follow me on twitter at hey john e that's where you guys can chat with me outside of youtube and I'll respond as quickly as possible. This should wrap it up for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you once again. This is John. Peace out.